What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. So, before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to the brother Jeremy Tyler with the fifteen dollar donation via the PayPal. Much respect to him for showing love to Too Raw for TV. All right, so uh, he left a question, a video request, that is. And his video request is that what if Ray Allen missed that game-winning shot for Miami in game six of the 2013 NBA Finals? How is LeBron's legacy viewed? And how is Tim Duncan viewed going 6-0 and in the finals? Is he considered anywhere, anywhere? near Jordan's accomplishments. Um, first of all, thank you for showing love once again through Too Raw for TV. And uh, look, we're assuming that everything else happens the same. We're not taking into account a ripple effect. Like if Ray Allen misses that shot, maybe Miami feels compelled. Look, okay, we built this super team, right? We built this team that was supposed to dominate the NBA, but instead uh, we've gone one and two in the NBA finals. Um, so maybe they feel compelled to make some significant roster changes. Uh, you could also argue that San Antonio uh, having won a championship may feel a little bit, I don't want to say complacent, but there's not the inner drive that they had the very next year. Um, you know, because look, a lot of us felt like if Mount Ginobili hadn't played so poorly in that 2013 finals, that they would have won that year. Okay. Um, so there's, you know, there's just certain things you got to look at here. Uh, from a competitive standpoint and from a, um, a, a personnel standpoint that might be different. But let's just go with everything else stays the same. Um, Ray Allen's legacy takes a bit of a hit. Uh, except a two-time NBA champion, he's a one-time champion. And I suspect in the LaMedia uh, world, they would have him be the butt of jokes and they would blame him for missing that shot somehow. Never mind that LeBron Ramon James just missed a wide open three uh, just moments earlier, a couple of sequences earlier. So uh, never mind that. They're not what they're going to focus on. They're going to focus on Ray Allen because you know what they do. They love to blame role players. And Ray Allen was very much a role player at that particular time. Uh, but, yeah, if, if honestly, for those who are um, nonpartisan LeBron fans, and regular fans, uh, I tend to think that we would look at LeBron's leg legacy a lot more uh, neg uh, negatively because he would then be what three and seven in the NBA Finals. He'd be three and seven, and then one of the championships is the bubble title, uh, which I mean, yeah, it, it's a championship, and everybody was, was according playing under the same rules. Uh, at the time, but that year just is different from every other championship year. Uh, then, of course, you have the one championship where, uh, you know, there's all these asterisks. Uh, Steph Curry was injured. Andrew Bogut got hurt. There was a suspension of game, uh, in game five of a player that probably would have been their MVP had they won. It's hard as to believe in Draymond Green. And then the one championship be against OKC as a young team, which will all of a sudden then be uh, retroactively looked upon as, oh, man, they had three MVPs on that team. James Harden, uh, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin, Dur Kevin Durant. It's interesting that I see LeBron fans always say that about that team, but then they'll say Russell Westbrook sucks. But he's an MVP and a Hall of Famer when they want to argue differently. But anyway... Yeah, I think that the media would still exist, but the GOAT argument would be a lot weaker. 
That's how I tend to look at it. The goat hard argument, which is already weak anyway, would be even weaker. It'd be even weaker, um, in my opinion. Now, as far as Tim Duncan is concerned, if he if he's six and zero in the NBA Finals, I think that cements him as a top five all time player. But I don't think he'll be in the Michael Jordan argument for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, the perception still would be that he had more help. He had David Robinson. Even if it was a, a, a deteriorated version of Dave Robinson, he had Mon Ginobili, he had Tony Parker, he had Stephen Jackson, and he played with a Kawhi, a young Kawhi Leonard. Um, Michael Jordan primarily just had, uh, you know, Horace Grant, Scottie Pippen, and Dennis Rodman. Okay, uh, and also the other great, great role players that played in San Antonio. And also, you know, just to be honest with you, the center position, the power four position just don't get the same love from fans as perimeter players. I think it's because the perimeter players are proportionally smaller than centers, even though most of the guys in the backcourt are still t much taller than your average person. I think regular fans can just relate to them. Most fans are not six foot ten and taller. Okay. Most fans aren't able to dunk on a, uh, you know, what is it? Well, that uh, ten foot goal. They're not able to do that. So, at the end of the day, uh, the center position just isn't respected. Look, Angel Reese plays like a traditional big, uh, big man. You know, I know she's a woman, a beautiful woman at that, but she plays like a traditional center. You see how all these guys say she's not skilled and all that? Tim Duncan could not, couldn't shoot threes. Not really. Uh, he wasn't a great ball handler. Okay. To the modern fan's eye, who is a very uneducated fan, in my opinion, uh, don't really know about the traditional positions and how they really truly play, they'll just look at him as the argument being against Tim Duncan is that Oh, he's not really skilled, which is ridiculous because Tim Duncan in his prime was probably the most fundamentally sound player in the league. But because he didn't have the bag, as these moron nitwits say, uh, they would look upon him in that way. But generally speaking, I think he would no doubt be not just the greatest power forward of all time, but he would be in that top five. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking right now, if Tim Duncan was 6-0 in the finals, I don't know how he's not at least in my top five or tops. It, it would elevate him some, uh, you know, because my top five is probably what Will Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, Krim Abdul Jabbar. Mm. In that instance, I might have to put Tim Duncan number four. If he was six and in the finals, I have to put him ahead of Magic and Bird and Kobe. So, yeah, uh, I think Tim Duncan would be in my top four. He'd be in my Mount Rushmore if he was 6-0 in the NBA Finals. Because as it is, he's already like top eight or nine in my book. So that's it. In summary, I think Ray Allen's legacy takes a little bit of a hit. Uh, the media would give him a bigger hit because they need a, they need a scapegoat. <coughs> they would try to – the media would try to minimize – uh this as far as looking at LeBron's legacy, but real true fans know that, that that it takes a big hit. And Tim Duncan's already stellar career becomes elevated even more so in my opinion. Um and man, you could also make an argument that look You also cast more holes in this LeBron is has been dominant crap because everybody that he played against, for the most part, at least the leaders, got their revenge on him. He could let's just go with it the way it is. Dirk Nowitzki beats him. Okay, he did beat a young core of Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, but Kevin Durant himself got his revenge with the Warriors. And goes two and one against him in the NBA Finals, right? 
Then Tim Duncan goes 2-0 and against him in this scenario in the finals. And then Steph Curry, uh, Steph Curry goes, what is that? Three and one against him in the NBA Finals, and then he has the bubble title, which nobody respect, and which they underachieved against the Miami Heat team. Which going into that series, remember that Miami Heat team, you had Jimmy Butler, who was exhausted from allegedly uh, pounding the hell out of a certain former ESPN uh, wrote, you know, rather you know Rubenesque reporter, whose name I won't name. Or say, then you had uh, injuries to what a couple of players in that team. I think Bam was hurt. Uh, uh, Gordon Dragic was hurt. They were supposed to sweep that team. But anyway, that's my take on it. Tell me what you guys think. <laughs> 